In September of 2022, a year before the outbreak of violence by Hamas, five cows arrived in Israel from Texas. So what, you might ask, five cows? Well, many people know now that they weren't just any cows. These were five perfectly red heifers, and their arrival was so controversial that it was used as the reason, or you might say excuse, for the Hamas attack on Israel a few weeks later on October the 7th. You're going to want to stay tuned for this episode of the John Henry Weston Show, where we're going to unpack all of that. Let's begin as we always do with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that's right. In September 2022, a year before the Hamas October 7th assault on Israel, which has escalated into one of the most shocking wars of our time, five perfectly red heifers, cows that is, that have not born calves, arrived in Israel from Texas. This was so controversial that it quickly prompted Hamas outlets to respond, calling it an attempt to, quote, Judaize the holy mosques, end quote, and claiming that, and I quote, Al-Aqsa, that is the mosque on the Temple Mount, is in danger, end quote. So, the Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third holiest site in the Islamic religion. Soon after that, Hamas launched its October 7th attack, named Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, after the mosque named the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Hamas's Abu Obadias actually cited these red heifers, these cows from Texas, as a reason for the attack, calling their arrival an act of and I quote, aggression against the feelings of an entire nation in the heart of its Arab identity, end quote, as well as serious disrespect for Muhammad. Now, the link was actually denied by Rabbi Azaira uh, Ariel, head of the Temple Institute's Red Heifer Project. He said, and I quote, Hamas does not need reasons to kill Jews. It only needs excuses. So how could someone interpret the arrival of five red cows as an act of aggression? Why would these cows be perceived as a threat to the Islamic holy site? And how could it be cited, even if insincerely, as a justification for the attack on Israel? The answer to those questions lies in the role many believe these cows will play in the rebuilding of the Jerusalem temple and what might follow. Now, you have to remember the Al-Aqsa Mosque is sitting on the site of the Jerusalem temple, which to rebuild would require bringing down the mosque. So, our Lord Jesus Christ prophesied that the second Jerusalem temple, which was standing in his day, would be destroyed. And so it was in the year 70 AD by the future Roman emperor Titus. Now, ever since then, rebuilding this temple has been a key goal for the Jewish people. The Temple Institute, based in Israel, was founded by Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, and is and now his son, Rabbi Azaria Ariel, leads its research department. The Institute's own website says that while some temple ceremonies are possible in a state of ritual impurity, a ceremony involving a red heifer is necessary for its full restoration. And I quote from their website, the complete renewing of all aspects of the Holy Temple service and the revival of complete ritual purity among Jews is contingent upon the preparation of the red heifer. So a red cow is what we're talking about. The website continues, I quote, the preparation of the red heifer is a precondition for the restitution of the complete service in the Holy Temple, end quote. So, what is this ceremony? It's mentioned, actually, in the Old Testament in Numbers 19. The Bible explains that a perfectly red heifer, a red cow, which is extremely rare, by the way, and has been hard to find, is to be killed and burnt and its ashes to be mixed with water. 
The mixture, the purpose of the whole ceremony, is the only thing able to remove the ritual impurity incurred from contact with the dead. This purification is key for the Jewish priesthood and for the sacrificial cult, that means the sacrificial offering. Listen to what Israel 365 News says about this, and I quote, Lacking a red heifer has left all of Israel ritually impure and unable to properly perform many other commandments, end quote. This is because, in the modern day, almost everyone in Israel is considered to be ritually impure because of contact with the dead, even simply by being in a hospital. So this is a problem because the ceremony has to be completed by a priest who is himself ritually pure. Although Rabbi Ariel believes that there are actually many, many men like this, at least he said so, finding them may be comparable to finding the red heifers themselves. So some people are saying that the Hamas statements and online speculations about the heifers and rebuilding the temple are barking up the wrong tree. However, the Daily Wire's Cassie Akiva, who tweeted a photo of herself with the heifers and explained, and I quote, the ashes are used to make a mixture that is used in the purification process for entering inner, the inner courtyard of the Temple Mount. Practical uses today, she says, would allow police officers to purify themselves before they enter that area for security reasons instead of being forced to enter that area to enforce security without purification first. She continues, while that is allowed by the letter of the Jewish law, all agree that it would be better to purify themselves before entry, end quote. Ariel from the Temple Institute also said that the heifer ceremony, quote, does not activate the requirement to build the third temple, end quote. And he added that, quote, building the temple does not depend on the red heifers, end quote. He also stated, quote, we do not do the ritual of the red heifer so that the Messiah will come, so that God will do something like this or like that, end quote. However, this doesn't seem to be completely transparent because, as we've already seen, that the Temple Institute says that the heifer ceremony is a precondition for building the temple, which is contingent on the purity obtained through the red heifer ashes. So, quoting again from Israel 365 News, uh, a news article that states that, quote, reinstating the temple service in its entirety is dependent on the return of the red heifer ritual, end quote. So, in addition, those involved have explicitly stated that their motivations with the Red Heifer Project are linked with the rebuilding of the temple. The heifers were brought to Israel by the Bona Israel, the, that's the Building of Israel organization, made up of Jews and Christians. And you know, many of the Protestant Christians are Zionists and have this belief about the current Jews being still the chosen people, not even needing uh, conversion to Christianity, actually, for salvation, but nonetheless. This organization, um, they were the, they had these red heifers. They actually found and raised them. Uh, the name, the name of the fellow who raised them is Brian Stinson. He's, he describes himself as Judeo-Christian, and he's an advisor to the organization. He was instrumental to the whole project. So let's take a look at the video where he is featured on the Bona Israel website. Watch this. Our guest today is literally the guy that has uh, brought those red heifers to Israel. And uh, Byron, I just want to thank you for coming on with us. We're here with Byron Stinson. And Byron, it's like uh, an amazing thing what the way the Lord's using you in this, in this season. In addition to that, the organization's website states its intentions clearly. I'll read it to you. Listen. They say, these red heifers can bring world peace. The Bible teaches us that the key for building the third temple, the house of prayer for all the nations, is purifying us with the red heifer in Jerusalem, end quote. Stinson has also said that, and I quote from him now, I believe the response of every Christian should be to support the building of the temple, end quote. 
So, he has also made clear that he understands the heifer ceremony to be a first and necessary step for rebuilding the temple and even links it to the emergence of a one-world government. Take a look at this. The rabbis are so excited because, like, like us, scattered in the nations, mm. I, I, everyone can feel the approach of a one-world government. You can feel mm. the approach of this time that something has to change. It, that, exactly. That, and everyone feels it. And uh, what they desperately are looking for is for the Messiah to come. Yeah. They know that this is the first step to be able to build a temple. Yeah. You can't purify the people that are going to work on the temple until you actually have this purification water that comes from the ash from the red heifer. Yes. So all of this is tied up with the coming of the Messiah, whom they call the Meshiak or Mosiak. Now, we know, of course, that the Jewish Messiah has already come. He is our Lord Jesus Christ. But he was rejected by the Jewish people who are still awaiting another Messiah to come. The Temple Institute website seems to follow the teaching of the enormously influential 12th century rabbi Moshe ben Manion, or Mammonides, or Rambam he's called. He linked the bringing of the next red heifer with the coming of the Messiah. And I'll quote from him. Nine red heifers were offered from the time that they were commanded to fulfill this mitzvah until the time when the temple was destroyed a second time. The first was brought by Moses, our teacher. The second was brought by Ezra. Seven others were offered until the destruction of the second temple. And the tenth will be brought by the king, Messiah. May he be speedily revealed. Amen, so may it be. God will. So, Mammonides also states that a key feat of this supposed Messiah, in fact, one of the conclusive proofs of his claim, is that he will rebuild the Jerusalem temple. So, there's a link between the bringing of the red heifers and the rebuilding of the Jerusalem temple, as well as the coming of the supposed Messiah to be accepted by the Jewish people. So, more on the coming uh, Messiah in a minute. But first of all, let's go back to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. It is a huge obstacle to any attempt to rebuild the temple. It's where they will want to build it, of course, but as I said, the mosque is the third holiest site in Islam. And the legend around Muhammad is that he is said to have been carried there on a magical horse where he tethered his horse to the western wall and from there ascended to heaven and met the various prophets. So it's hugely a holy site. Islamic, The Islamic world is never going to allow for it to be taken down without a war. Non-Muslims are not even allowed to pray there. And it's long been a site of controversy. The only way a Jewish temple is going to be built on that site is if the Al-Aqsa Mosque is destroyed. The Islamic world would never tolerate this. In the build-up to October the 7th, Israeli settlers and ultra-nationalist Jewish groups had been forcing their way past security and trying to perform what authorities called religious Talmudic rituals inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The destruction of this Al-Aqsa Mosque would be taken as a total provocation and it would surely be cited as a reason for further violence, perhaps escalated further than we can even imagine. The results could radically surpass October the 7th and the Al-Aqsa flood. So, but those involved in this project are pressing ahead regardless. Perhaps this is because they are confident that the Messiah, their, their Messiah, would indeed come. And because sages such as Maimonides taught that he would be the one who fights the wars of God and succeeds in doing so, and that his reign will commence with a great war between two powers. So, so much for the Jewish and Muslim expectations, but what about Catholics? There is no consensus among Catholic theologians as to whether the temple will ever actually be rebuilt. 
Previous attempts have failed. With Julian the Apostate, attempts were thwarted by miracles. Fireballs came out of the ground. However, if the temple were to be rebuilt, this rebuilding may well be associated with the appearance of a supposed messiah, supposed messiah or antichrist. And this is where things start to become very scary indeed. Our Lord said, and I quote, I am come in the name of my Father, and you receive me not. He's speaking to the Jews. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. End quote. So there have been many false messiahs acclaimed by some of the representatives of the Jewish people, including Bar Kokhba and even Napoleon. But there is an expectation endorsed by weighty theologians that a man accepted as the Messiah by all the Jewish people will probably be the Antichrist. This seems to have been the view of Saints Jerome, Ambrose, Gregory the Great, Ephraim, and John Chrysostom. So if the temple were to be rebuilt, and as a result, a particular man were to be acclaimed as the Messiah for the Jews, then such a man may well be the prophesied Antichrist. And matters continue to this day, step by step. Remember, I said how hard it would be to find an appropriate Kohen or, or priest who would be pure, almost as hard as a perfectly red heifer. Well, as we know now, they found the red heifers. And the Temple Institute also claim to have found a young Kohen, a young priest, fit to perform the ceremony, having been born at home and never been to a hospital uh, since he was born. By the way, of course, I'm not saying that this young priest, uh, th this young Jewish priest, uh, is a potential Mashiach or Antichrist. That's not the point at all. Uh, he is just one person who could potentially perform this massly, massively important ceremony to obtain the purification water. A massive altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. According to some believers, the ceremony needs to be performed right here on the Mount of Olives, looking directly into where the temple once stood. But something else now stands in its place. The Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, among the holiest sites in Islam. But who knows what all this means, but one thing seems sure. Even mainstream media is reporting on what appears to be a giant altar built for the ceremony outside the city walls. So, things are definitely afoot. For Lysite News, this is John Henry Weston. I may God bless you.